Hello and welcome to The Loudspeaker, your definitive guide on how to scale your startup. This first tip for every fintech startup is what are the media and press saying about us? How are we being perceived by these people? PR stunts are any activities that allow you to engage with the audience. I don't agree with the fact that our publicity is good publicity. Here is where we talk to communications professionals from all around the world to let you know what are the best practices and cool ideas that you can implement for your startups. Local landscapers have a new tool to reach customers. The app GreenPal is now live in Sioux Falls. Hey, if you're looking for a gardener, we have some good news. A new app launched in Acadiana last week, and it allows you to find landscaping service with the touch of your screen. Another first for our area is an app that's similar to Uber and also to Lyft, but instead of requesting a ride, you can actually ask for lawn care or snow removal. Well, if we're able to get started, can you tell our listeners, Brian, who you are and what you do for Your Green Pal and how it works? Yeah, so my name is Brian Clayton. I am co-founder and CEO of GreenPal. In a sentence, GreenPal is Uber for lawn mowing. So if you have a home and you need to get basic grass cutting services, you just download GreenPal in the App Store or Google Play Store. You put your address in, you'll get quotes from five lawn mowing services nearby you in less than 60 seconds. You can hire the one you want to work with and pay them and rate them all through the app. If the first lawn mowing goes well, you can just book them for the rest of the lawn mowing season for them to come every week or every two weeks. And it all just happens magically for you. Fantastic. I love companies like this where it's a really simple and smart concept because it's really hard to, to sometimes talk about companies uh, when it comes to PR, when it's really hard to first get past the concept of the company. But this seems like a really simple and smart idea. So it's great to have you on here. Awesome. Glad to be here. Uh, so if we could get started in the sense of like PR, when did GreenPal first consider adopting a PR strategy and what was the motivation behind it? We launched in 2013 and we paid a development agency to build the first version of the website. And it was a total abysmal failure. We, uh, we, we, uh, it, was a, it was hard to use, but we had to figure out a way to get people to use the version that we had because we needed feedback. So the first thing we did was we passed out 100,000 door hangers all over Nashville, Tennessee, <laughs> trying to get people to use this thing. And uh, what, what we were able to find out was door hangers was not a repeatable and scalable uh, customer acquisition strategy. But we were able to get uh, 100 people to try it out. And of those 100, we were able to get 20 or 30 to meet with us and, and tell us uh, what they thought about it. And, and that was able to give us enough validation to keep moving forward. But one thing happened out of, out of just uh, manufacturing that momentum. Uh, we, we looked up and caught the eye of a reporter in, in Nashville who decided to run a story on us. Uh, I guess she felt bad for us, but um, <laughs> it, Uber was just uh, getting hot at the time. And so we were able to kind of ride that trend of Uber for X, uh, Uber for lawn mowing, Uber for home cleaning, Uber for laundry service. And so we were able to, to kind of uh, tap into that vein. And she did a story about us. And what we found was the next day we had four times the amount of signups uh, that we had from passing out all 100,000 door hangers. So, we're, we're able to understand that, okay, PR actually might be a good, a good strategy for us in terms of customer acquisition. And I, uh, I, I happened to stumble upon a quote by Bill Gates, I guess about a week or two after that. He said if he was down to his last hundred bucks, he said he would spend it all on PR. And so yeah. we, had, we had three co-founders, uh, myself and two other guys that I recruited to, to build this thing. And one co-founder was focused on nothing but technology, uh, you know, building the software, building the back end, building the database, all of that. I was focused on marketing growth and the product. But our other co-founder, we decided to take him off of what he was doing and, and enable him to solely focus on nothing but PR. And that was seven years ago. And here we are seven years later, we have over 200,000 weekly active customers that use the platform to get their grass cut. Uh, we're going to do over $20 million in revenue this year. And that co-founder still, to this day, all he does uh, for 50, 60 hours a week is just PR. Outreach, 
talking to journalists, uh, getting the word out about our, pro our our launches in the new markets, and that's how important it is to us. It's it's it it, it drives uh, twenty to thirty percent of our our user acquisition, and it also drives our SEO strategy in terms of uh, of building up our domain authority. So we we rank well in Google searches for for people looking for lawn mowing services. So it really is core to what we do. That's awesome, and that's a really cool backstory to to how you came across PR. And I really like the fact that you kind of you were creative in one sense, and I think that the, what you did with the door hangers is is kind of the mentality you need when it comes to PR because it's all about being creative and how you can like frame your your story. And right. I think that that's a great stepping stone, like the way you started with. And obviously, it did catch the attention of a journalist, and there, therefore, you you found like the power of PR. And I absolutely love that quote from Bill Gates. I've heard that before, and I think <laughs> yeah, that that really true. does highlight it. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It's it's a great quote. Yeah. And you obviously mentioned that one of your co-founders, you know, I suppose your your main focus on PR, they are your main, like your go-to guy for PR. And I understand that you bootstrapped your PR. What was one of the hardest challenges you faced taking this approach by bootstrapping your PR? Yeah. So so uh, in the early days, we had no money. So the bootstrapping decision was was pretty crystal clear. Uh, we, we knew we had to do it ourselves. And so everything that we've done in, in, in terms of the building of the platform, uh, the marketing of it, the PR is, is all been self-executed for a very long time. Now, now here we are six, seven years later, we, we have a team of over 30 people uh, helping us build this thing and distribute it. Uh, and so a lot of things we're able to delegate, but one of the things that we have not been able to figure out a way to delegate effectively is the PR. Uh, for one reason, it, it, it can be cost prohibitive. We've talked to some, some local agencies. We've talked to some people that, that can help uh, help us with it. And, but I mean, by the time you spend 10, 20, $30,000 a month on this stuff, we would just be better off executing it ourselves. And, and quite frankly, we could get more, more traction doing it ourselves than, than, uh, outsourcing it. There are some functions and some aspects that we do outsource though. We, we've taken our PR and, and, and we have, we've broken it down into tasks and some of the repetitive tasks such as, uh, you know, journalist research and, Maybe even some of the repetitive outreach we've managed to, to outsource to to people to help us with that. But when it comes down to a uh, you know, co-founder flying to Omaha, Nebraska to meet with a journalist, to be on TV and to have that local lawn mowing service, talk about how he's using GreenPal to double his business this year and talking to a homeowner to, to tell that to tell the, the, the journalist how they were in a bind and they needed a lawn mowing service to come within an hour and they used green pal to do that. There's no way to scale, scale and out and outsource that we have, we do it in house and we find it valuable enough to do in house. Uh, between me and my co-founder last year, 2019, we were on TV over 75 times um, throughout the United States. And it, it, it's comes down to nothing but sending out a hundred emails a day uh, being willing to jump on a plane tomorrow to go to Kansas City, Missouri, or 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 Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or Boston, Massachusetts, if you have to to be on TV the next day, and and the willingness to dedicate those resources and that that flexibility to executing a PR, I think, is what it takes to be successful at it. Definitely, and it clearly sounds like you've racked up quite a impressive kind of like resume of pr results because i coming onto this call i had no idea that you'd been featured on so many news channels and sites I, all i knew is the the sites that i'd seen from your website like the publication you featured in yeah so so for us so a couple couple things there tease out so on the home page you know we've got the big the big names you know forbes time wall street journal we've been in all those and and that's fine that's that's great you know, when, when you when you're featured in one of those publications and they link back to your website, it's good for SEO authority. Um, it's good. It's good just to have a feather in your cap. But but I would rather be in the Chattanooga Free Times than rather than in the Wall Street Journal. I would rather be I would rather have Green Pal featured in the Spokane, uh, Washington newspaper than than be uh, talked about in Forbes. Mm -hmm. Because because the the PR hits that move consumers to our platform are those local news outlets, whether it be the the Fox affiliate in Amarillo, Texas, uh, mm -hmm. or the the ABC affiliate affiliate in Tampa, Florida. Those are the, the the PR hits that move people to our platform. 
being talked about in ink is, is great. And yeah, that, that link to our website is great. And we do that too. But really where we get the best bang for our buck in PR is, is building it from the ground up, local uh, media outlets talking about us, putting us on TV, featuring us in the paper, because that's what drives a thousand signups a day mm. in, in, uh, in Houston, Texas. If you're interested in seeing how Publicize can grow your startup, sign up for a free PR assessment on our website. And for a limited time only, exclusively for the loudspeaker listeners, you can receive an SEO assessment as part of your package for any tier of service at no extra charge with this special promotion. To find out more, visit publicize.co slash LS promo. I think you summed it up perfectly with bang for your buck for PR because not all PR is the same. And that's quite evident when it depends on what you are trying to achieve. And I think many clients which enter Publicize and come on to use our services often have in their mind, I want to be on TechCrunch, I want to be on Forbes, I want to be on the major publications. But a lot of the time it can be vertical publications or niche publications that appeal to a very specific audience. That is the audience that you want to get in front of. And clearly you found the value in that by going after these like specific local kind of news stations. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it goes on both sides. If you, if you have a localized business like ours, a local localized marketplace, you have to build every city and town from the ground up and PR mm. maps to that. But, uh, but we're also a multi-sided marketplace. We have consumers that we need to attract to the platform and we use PR for that. But on the other side of the, of the transaction are small business owners that are in the landscaping industry. And we use PR for that as well. We, we reach out to the trade magazines, we reach out to the, the industry uh, affiliations, and we, we pitch them on articles or, or books that we're writing or things like that that we can do to add value to that audience. So our brand is, is front and center when, when those readers are, are, are on those publications. And doing that has enabled us to basically not even worry about uh, the supply side acquisition for our platform because we're already a household name in the industry. If you if you are starting a lawn mowing business or you make your livelihood running a landscaping company, you know about GreenPal. And that's because of the PR we've done on that side of the transaction. And mm -hmm. um, what advice in general would you have for a company like yourself if they've started off and they want to go down the route of, I suppose, ticking off all bases, kind of like you've done with the big publications like Forbes and Wall Street Journal and Time, and then maybe the more local ones? Yeah, so have somebody own it. Uh, like I was telling you, my, my co-founder owns local PR. In fact, uh, we were told we were doing our, our annual kind of wrap up uh, early this year and we were looking at what we did and we, we were able to double from 10 to 20 million dollars in revenue. And my co-founder sighed and he said, you know, all the flight delays, all the shitty airport meals, all the Holiday Inn Express stays, all the <laughs> rental cars, all it was worth it. Yeah, he said it was worth it all. And, and a lot of times, too, he'll he'll drive to Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana, an eight hour drive. And then the last minute, the, the friggin journalist will cancel on him. <laughs> that happens. And, you know, we were he was able to look back and say it was all worth it. So he owns it. He lives, eats, yeah. breathes PR for this for this business. And so that's a big piece of it. It can't be an afterthought uh, for whether it be a business, a part of the business ownership or, or whoever on your team is going to own it. Somebody has to own it. But the other pieces like, like the high level stuff, like wall street journal, Forbes, Inc time, like all of those hits I got uh, me mm -hmm. as a CEO, I'm reaching out to these journalists. I'm on Hayro three times a day. My, my day, my day is, 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 is organized around Hayro mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I pitch probably four or five, uh, things a day, you know, whether it be, somebody at uh, business.com that's looking for uh, somebody who who is who has started a business and can recommend the best legal structure if you don't want to raise money i mm -hmm. can pitch a story about how we figured that out and what we did you know there's a million of those things that i've done as, as a business owner of two different businesses that i can add value and that's how that's one of the main ways i've gotten us in the big the big name publications without having uh, a million dollar a year pr budget mm. There's a quote that I really like, and it says, um, you can have results or you can have excuses. You can't have both. And it Absolutely. really does sound like you folks have gone out there and been like, right, we're going to get results. And you've really put in the time, the energy. 
and develop the knowledge to to get results so that when you do look back over that year you can say yeah we got results it was worth it and we don't have any excuses so absolutely congratulations there, there, there's a little circle of influence that you have where you can act in that circle and you just have to act in that circle you almost cannot even worry about what's outside of that circle is what can i do to mm -hmm. move this forward and that's it you really almost don't even have to worry about anything else mm -hmm. i can imagine though Obviously, there are certain things outside of that circle which can impact you and your abilities to still pursue PR or perhaps rather than impact your abilities to pursue PR, they force you to adapt your strategy. So on that note, in relation to COVID, how has COVID impacted your business and your PR strategy? Yeah, great question. So when when this set in, we were worried that we weren't going to, you know, we were on TV and, and in the paper, literally on TV over over 70 times last year. And so we wanted to do that again this year. And we, we saw the changing dynamic of, of OK, you really uh, people aren't wanting to meet up anymore. People aren't wanting to do live in person interviews anymore. How what are we going to do? Mm. We didn't give up um, on the one hand we're not having to fly all over the country anymore because reporters are not as inclined to do in-person meetings at the moment. Mm -hmm. However, there is a flip side of that is people are tired of hearing the same old, same old stories about COVID. And so reporters and, and, and newspapers are looking for other stories to run that are, that are happy in, in nature that are just not the negative uh, uh, news that, that is dominating the cycle these days. And so we're able to tap into that and get still get traction, still get in, in front of people, still get hits. And and as of right now, not have to travel across the country to do it in person. So it's almost kind of good because while we're not getting the number of hits, yeah, we're not having to spend the, the, the resources to get them. Mm. So I think the, the key is, is just is just to keep at it, not give up just because you, uh, it's a little more difficult doesn't mean it's still not worth doing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's clear that you're applying the same mentality that you had beforehand to this. So you, you're going to keep getting results. And it sounds like you're doing all the right things anyway. Yeah. And the other thing, yeah. too, is is trying to use it against itself. Um, we were able to, to pitch our story of, hey, you know, you, you, like, Uber, you like Uber Eats, you like DoorDash uh, for the contactless ordering. You can also do that for your lawn mowing service. We yeah. got several hits based on just that taking that angle of, hey, this is this is a way to get this done with not ever having to talk to anybody face to face. And and that got us some traction, too. So also looking for the angle of how your business fits into COVID and what you can do to solve problems with the new normal, I think, can help, too. Yeah, it definitely does sound like a solution for for these times. Definitely, if you're going to have that option of like contactless uh, lawn mowing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So my last question to you. What are Green Pal's PR ambitions for the future? We want to leverage PR to make the Green Pal brand in the lexicon of the English language. Mm -hmm. So you think, okay, yeah, I'll just Uber over there. To be able to say that about lawn mowing, mm. yeah, no, my shoot, my grass is three feet tall. Just get a Green Pal. Mm. We want to be in that vocabulary. And, and, while we don't have the hundreds of millions of dollars of venture capital to do that, mm -hmm. we believe that we can leverage PR to get there. Right now, we have over 200,000 people that use the, the platform to, to get this simple chore done, and we want to make that over a million. And we, we have a few user acquisition strategies that work for us. PR is one of them. So moving forward, we will always be dedicating 20, 30 percent of our resources to PR at different levels uh, to to help keep help make our name a household name in, in, in the United States and in, and in Canada, UK and Australia. Mm. I think that creativity and the creativity you've utilized here is definitely far more important than money itself, because if you have money and no creativity, then you're not a trendsetter. You're just following trends that other people set and you're just copying other ideas, whereas clearly the creativity you've demonstrated i think that is the secret sauce or the key ingredient for really getting good pr and yeah achieving exactly what you're aiming to achieve becoming a, a real household name and uh, an innovator more than anything so yeah, i i think I you got a good that. chance yeah thank you <laughs> excellent brian if people want to find out about uh, green pal or follow you or keep up to date with the work that you're doing what's the best way for them to do that yeah so 
all they got to do is just download Green Pal, and it's in the Google Play Store and in the Apple App Store. If you are listening to this and you value your time and don't want to spend it mowing your yard, just download Green Pal, and you can get a great lawn mowing service at a great price in less than 60 seconds. Uh, if anybody wants to reach me, they can just email me, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at yourgreenpal.com. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Brian. It's been a real pleasure. Hey, I had a good time. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>